what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at Steam OS 3 otherwise known as Steam Deck OS running on the all new Minus Forum Nook XI7. This is an absolutely amazing console size PC that was recently released and I've done a couple videos they make an i5 and an i7 version but the main question I got was how well does it handle Steam Deck OS or Steam OS 3 and in this video we're going to find out. And personally, I think this is kind of the perfect PC to install something like Steam Deck OS on, because as we all know, when it comes to the operating system that's on the Steam Deck, it's definitely very user-friendly, and it's set up more like a console, rather just a PC running Windows, or a desktop variant of Linux. And of course, with Steam OS, we still have access to the desktop if you ever want to go over there. But gaming on a big screen with a PC in this form factor using Steam Deck OS is really cool. And if you're interested in seeing how this PC performs with Windows, I will leave links to the other videos I created. I've done the Nook XI5 and the Nook XI7, but in this video we've got the higher end model, the Nook XI7. When it comes to the CPU, we get an i7-11800H, 8 cores, 16 threads with a max clock up to 4.6 GHz. With this one here, I've got 16 GB of RAM, and for the GPU, this is actually utilizing an RTX 3070 laptop variant. We've got 8 GB of GDDR6 VRAM, and it performs really, really well. It's also got two M.2 NVMe slots inside of the unit, so we can easily upgrade the storage. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, Thunderbolt 4 support, and of course, it runs Windows, but we can also run Linux. And one of my favorite things about the Nook X, be it the i5 or the i7 version, these things run really cool and quiet. I was really surprised when I initially reviewed the i5 version. I figured the i7 version would be a bit louder, but they're right on par with each other, and they don't get loud at all. I mean, you don't hear this thing spin up like you would with a laptop jet fan or anything like that. Alright, so here it is. First thing you might notice is a little bit of glitching going on with Deck UI, and it really comes down to the NVIDIA drivers right now. That's one of the main issues when it comes to using an NVIDIA card with SteamOS 3 or Hollow ISO. And if we head into the settings here, we'll go all the way down and you can see that we've got that i7-11800H and the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Laptop Edition with 8GB of VRAM. So one of the main things that I had to do to get this running properly, at least with the Steam Deck performance overlay, was totally recompile Mango HUD from source. It took me a few tries to get it right, and I will admit that I think some of the clocks and temperatures it's showing right now aren't correct for this unit, but it is working. And uh, one thing I noticed is if I just go into my library, it's actually really smooth here. But uh, in the main launcher itself, we do get some of those graphical glitches going on with this NVIDIA GPU. And this is the main reason I always suggest using an AM and this is the main reason I always suggest using an AMD card with this operating system at least right now. But uh, one thing we can do is set a custom resolution and we're definitely going to have to do this because this is putting out way more performance than the Steam Deck is. And if you just launch a game, you're only going to be able to go up to 720p. So from here, I'm going to set it to 4K. Now it's not going to run everything at 4K, but we'll have that option to go up and down from the game settings. So I've got a bunch of games installed that I want to test out in this video, and the first one we're going to do here is Spider-Man Remastered. This is a game that's not performing very well in Linux with this NVIDIA setup that I have right now, but in Windows this game works absolutely amazingly with this RTX 3070. Alright, so here it is, Spider-Man Remastered, we're at 1440p, high settings, and as you can see, we're going to get dips under 60 with the way this is right now, and even if I go up to 4K, I'm basically getting the same exact performance. I've tried lowering the settings, going all the way down to very low with it, but just to give you an idea, in Windows 11 with the same game, 1440p, very high settings, we can get an average of 85 FPS. God of War 1440p Ultra settings were not that far off from Windows right now when it comes to performance. In Windows, I was getting an average of 78 FPS, no DLSS, we're set up the same exact way here, and I'm getting an average of around 71. But I'd say the best way to play this is go ahead and lock it at 60 and play away. So I'm just going to use these Steam Deck settings here, it's going to lock it right at 60. Not an issue to run this at 1440p, ultra 60 FPS on this machine using Steam OS. I definitely wanted to throw at least one fighting game in here, so Injustice 2, and I'm not exactly sure why this isn't Steam Deck certified yet, because it does run really well in Steam OS and on the Steam Deck, 
right now with this setup here, 4K maxed out running at 60. And I had a great feeling it was going to play this well. I guess it's not certified because it's kind of an older game and they're not really worried about it, but it does perform really well. Moving over to The Witcher 3, and in SteamOS, I'm actually getting worse performance with this than I was in Windows. I'm at 1440p right now, ultra, no hair works, and in Windows, we can actually run this game right there at around 63 FPS on average at 4K maxed out the same way, but with this, I did have to drop that resolution down to get 60 out of it. Project Cars 2, one I always like to test because it's still one of my favorite racing games. We are totally maxed out here at 1440p, getting well over 100 FPS. And with racing games, at least for me, I do like locking these at 60, but I've got it unlocked here just to show you how well it runs. And it does perform amazingly. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, and just to give you a baseline here, in Windows, Ultra Settings 1440p with DLSS set to quality, we can get 76 FPS out of it. But in Linux, at those same settings, I was getting dips under 60, so I had to take it down to high settings, but we're at 1440p, and we're getting an average of around 72 FPS. Still fully playable and looks great. And finally, we've got Doom Eternal. Unfortunately, the sound cut out when I started up the game. I tried restarting it and it was doing the same thing. So I'm guessing the NVIDIA drivers are messing around with stuff here. But we're at 1440p, Ultra, and we can get well over 120 FPS out of this game. In Windows, Ultra Settings, 4K, we can get over 80. And we can basically match the performance here at 1440p. So it's really not that far off from Linux to Windows with this game here. So the last thing I wanted to show off here was desktop mode. So when it comes down to it, you can always use this as a nice Linux PC. And since we've got those two M.2 slots in this unit, we can add two drives, have one with Windows, one with Linux. It could be SteamOS if you want it, or go with something like Manjaro. But with something like this, we've still got full access to a desktop operating system. As you can see, we've got that i7 11800H with that 3070. So with something like this, you can do some web browsing, some email checking. You want to get some 4K video playback out of the way. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but yeah, with SteamOS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi do work with this unit right out of the box. I didn't have to do any configuration there. Download some different applications and more importantly, emulators. This thing handles emulation like a champ. In Windows, I could do anything I wanted to at 4K, PS3, Switch, and I could even do Xbox 360 using Xenia and the harder to emulate games like Red Dead. So it's definitely a great all-around PC whether you want to run Windows or Linux on this unit. But obviously, in this video, we took a look at Steam Deck OS or Steam OS 3 running, and it does perform really well. There is some configuration you need to do if you want to use that performance overlay, but if you keep it disabled, you're not going to have any issues. I mean, you can just run the games like it is. We got a little bit of glitching going on with the Steam Deck UI here, but, you know, it's still a bit early for NVIDIA drivers and Steam OS 3. And of course, what we've got right now from Valve for Steam OS 3 is really configured for the Steam Deck. This is Hollow ISO. I'll leave a link to the website in the description, at least their GitHub. Super easy to install. Personally, I would still recommend using an AMD card right now just to eliminate any kind of compatibility issues. But if you did want to install it on a PC like this, it's more than possible to do so. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more about the Nook X, be it the i5 or the i7 version, I'll leave links to Menace Forum's website in the description. And if you want to check out the emulation and Windows gaming performance on either of these machines, I've got some videos. I'll leave those down below as well. And one last thing, I'd like to know what you thought about the performance of SteamOS on the Nook XI7. Is this something that you would do to your own machine, or would you just keep it Windows? Let me know what you think down below. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.